In this video, I'm gonna go through everything it took to get from this to this. Hey, I'm still Tate and I still work in engineering coffee, but I live in this tiny studio apartment in Chicago now. So that means with all this coffee equipment I've got, I can be a pretty annoying neighbor because let's be honest, espresso machines at home can be loud. If you're nerdy enough to own one, then it probably has one of these. This is a vibratory pump and it is both the cheapest and unfortunately the loudest pumps out there. So that makes sense why they're on home machines. And yeah, of course I have those laying around here. Weirdly enough, I've been looking around the internet and I can't really find any good videos on how to make them quieter. So I spent the last few months trying out three different ways to make them sound a whole lot nicer. Oh yeah, and for some context, I'm doing all this on my Sylvia Pro. This could be done on a Pro Max as well. No, this isn't an iPhone. Um, Pro X, really any home machine out there. And I'm also gonna be comparing this against my friend's machine, uh, Casey, Casey Drinks Coffee and really highlight the comparison of the sounds, not so much the decibel readings, because you're gonna hear a difference in frequencies, not so much the overall volume, just a much more pleasant sound. Uh, you'll see that my machine's opened up right now. Um, I'm working on something else, you'll see that later. But for now, uh, let's just go through all the three different ways that I went through to make this thing sound a whole lot nicer. All three of these are gonna require disassembling the machine. So for the Sylvia Pro, you wanna make sure that the machine is unplugged and start to open it up from the top. Once you get the reservoir and the top panel out, you wanna go ahead and move on to the front panel, but first remove the drip tray and lower its risers as low as they go. Then it's just a matter of removing the two screws. At this point, you'll have access to loosen two of the screws that hold the main case in place, and then you can loosen the two up top as well. One last screw holds this panel in place and it's hidden down below where the reservoir sat. Once that's loosened, you can just slightly raise the big stainless panel and it comes away. And that makes it easier to remove the last panel that goes around the reservoir with two screws. So first up, quite a few months ago, I installed what's called a pulser. It's made primarily for quick mill espresso machines, but can work on just about any of them. And basically what it is, is it's a $32 shipped um, diaphragm that kind of attaches to the output of the pump. So if I were to take this elbow off, which usually is pretty easy to take off, it's just a eighth inch uh, pipe fitting, and install the diaphragm at the tip, and when this kind of makes that jackhammer sound and, and force, uh, this diaphragm absorbs some of that, that, that energy, and then just kind of shoots the water out. Um, like I said, I tried this quite a while ago. I ran it for quite a while. Um, it does have to break in a little bit. So when I first installed it, I really didn't notice a difference. And I was quite disappointed. Huh, they sound the same. <laughs> but over time, it would sound quite a bit better. It kind of mellowed it out a little bit. Um, so let's go through the installation and see what sort of difference it makes. First, you want to lay down a towel at the output of the brew pump because that long braided hose is going to be full of water and probably going to drain most of it when you remove it. Then just get that hose out of the way. Then you want to get that brass elbow out, but mine was on there pretty tight, so I had to find a wrench narrow enough to grab the flats on the pump to get some torque. With that off, you can prep the pulser with some Teflon tape and screw it right onto the pump's output. Then with some more Teflon tape, replace the elbow between the pulser and the hose. At that point, I got the machine fired up, but uh, it did not sound great. I checked around, I didn't see anything wrong, so I fired it up again and ran some water through it, and eventually it sounded normal. So I assume this is just part of the priming process. I then drained some water out of the steam boiler to compare the noise with the unmodified pump. And like I mentioned earlier, it really didn't sound much better. And at this point in the video, I was actually ready with an outro where I was visibly disappointed and explaining why this whole thing wasn't worth it. But I put some miles on it, packed it up, put some literal miles on it, moving from Cali to Chicago, mostly to get back to my son. Doing so good, buddy. Good job. So after settling in, here's how it sounds now. With Casey's stock machine on the right, and mine on the left, there's definitely a difference now. And if I prep some espresso and put them under a load, Yeah, I think mine definitely sounds a bit better. 
Next up, I dropped 170 bucks on what is the quietest vibratory pump you can get. This is the Lilit Silent Pump. It is out of the Mara X espresso machine. And yeah, again, this thing is really quiet. It really smooths out the sound. I think it makes a little bit of a change to the flow rate, but we'll take a look at that. But it makes a huge difference, and I think it might be worth it. All right, so with the hood popped, the plan is to drop this pump into the place of the old one. The easy part is just unplugging it from the two connectors, but the annoying thing here is getting the mounts off of the frame. On my machine, there are two nuts on the bottom of the machine that hold the bolts down, so it took me a second to get those off without having to flip the whole machine over. But once that's out, you need to go ahead and remove the braided hose from the output and throw that onto the new pump. You'll notice that I'm also adding the pulsar to the new pump because this machine is going to end up having all the mods in the end to see just how quiet it can be. Now it's just a matter of closing up the hood and making sure everything is tight to avoid any unnecessary rattling. So under no load, things are still pretty buzzy on the original. And we're getting a nice hum on this new pump. And as for the change in flow rate, there definitely is a difference. Here I dosed out 100 grams of water and saw the new pump is slower, so that may change your recipes a bit. Okay, and next up I used automotive sound deadening material. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it works really, really well. So typically this is used to make your car sound a lot quieter. It's notoriously heavy, but uh, I don't really care about that. I'm kind of used to carrying espresso machines through airports anyways, it's an another story. But a friend of mine named Guy did this to his decent, wow, that thing was quiet. Um, it was basically silent from what I heard. And fortunately, it's awfully cheap. So I got quite a bit for 25 bucks. It was 10 square feet, which was more than enough to totally coat this guy. Yeah, I mean, it's it doesn't normally sound like that. And then I also applied it to Casey's machine as well. So if you can get less, that's awesome. Again, it was like 25 bucks for all of it. And it's really an easy install process. All right, so we're back to getting all the panels off. And with some cloth laid down, you can go ahead and start laying out and fitting some of the sheets. You'll see I went ahead and cut out slots for anything that isn't flat, partially because I'm considering wrapping this machine down the road and I need access to all the fittings that hold anything to the panels. And this also came with a tool to flatten out and get any bubbles out of the sheets. Then onto the top panel, you have to be careful not to go all the way around to the edges since they get sandwiched against the top of the machine and I followed a similar process on the panel that surrounds the reservoir. This doesn't have to look super pretty because it's gonna be inside the machine, so I just kinda of place panels where I saw fit. Then to move on to the bottom, you wanna carefully flip the machine on its side, and fortunately I didn't have any issues of water leaking out of the machine like this. You'll still wanna avoid some screws that hold the steam boiler pump in place, along with some ventilation holes, and there's a drain hole here for when the drip tray overfills. Then the front panel is a little tricky because it sandwiches against a lot of parts, so there really is just this narrow strip that's available. Then it's just a matter of packaging everything back up. So now one last time I fired everything up and under no load, we have a pretty pleasant sounding machine. I think the nicest thing about this is just how clearly you can now hear the drips from the espresso. And to test just the deadening material, I fired up the steam boiler and drained it to trigger its pump as well. All right, so that's where my Sylvia Pro is at now. Uh, with it being so much quieter now, it's really turned into my go-to apartment machine, uh, which is kind of ironic considering uh, uh, that's my apartmental right there. Not really fitting the namesake anymore, but still love it. But uh, now the Sylvia Pro has really turned into my dream machine. Uh, really the noise was the only complaint that I had for it, so I've been enjoying it a whole lot more. Um, and sorry I've been out of it for quite a while. I've moved, gotten new jobs, no longer with Bellwith anymore, but now working with super cool product. Um, 
And uh, yeah, I'm hoping to get back into these videos again. Like I mentioned, um, there is some stuff that I'm working on that might make people excited, might make some people a little upset, uh, but I'm just building stuff that I need for myself. So I'm happy to share it. So really stoked to be making more videos. Keep an eye out for more soon. See ya.